Hello there. As you can probably tell, I, uh, I did another data science project. You might actually like this one because this is something that you can use. Now, it would usually take about a week to put something like this together for, for a normal person. But as an experienced data scientist, this took me only two weeks to, to put together. <clears throat> All right, now that I'm cleaned up, let's get to the origin story of this project. Over the last few months, I've really been embracing the broader YouTube community. I've been watching more videos from other content creators, and I've started getting involved in their comment sections. After asserting myself in these communities, I realized that many of them had strong subcultures, inside jokes, and there was incredible nuance to the discussions there. People were very active and actually holding in-depth conversations. They were also creating valuable comments that other people found useful. This is obviously something that already happens on my YouTube channel, but I wanted to find a way to inspire or incentivize more of this type of behavior. Okay, so what am I gonna do about it? Admittedly, my first couple ideas might not have been so great, but by the end of my brainstorming, I think I was really onto something. People usually play just a little bit harder when they're keeping score. Why not create an engagement leaderboard for everyone who comments on my channel? I could give away some incredible prizes for those who had the highest quality engagement with me and with the community each month and eventually at the end of the year. You'll hear more about some of the incredible prizes from HP, NVIDIA, Interview Query, and I guess myself at the end of this video. There's nothing like some wholesome and friendly competition to light the YouTube comment section aflame. I also wanted to leverage some of the skills that I learned during the 66 days of data challenge so that maybe I could build something that's actually useful for once. So I got to work building my dream leaderboard. I got the data from the YouTube API and I put it into Streamlit. Now Streamlit is a great package for prototyping your dashboards, for productionizing your machine learning models. And I also use this in combination with Altair to build some beautiful-ish graphics. You gotta cut me some slack, this is only the first version of this. I'll hopefully, you know, spice it up, add all the bells and whistles at some point in the future. And that's it, I was done. Or so I thought. One major problem ended up arising. And that's that the YouTube API can only be queried every so often. So if the page got a reasonable amount of volume, our requests would be blocked by Google. This is not good because I'm planning on this page breaking the record for the most trafficked website of all time. And this is where my true struggles began. In order to get around this problem, I needed to store this data somewhere. I also needed to create a script that would request the YouTube API every so often and update the place where I was holding the data. If I did that, I could in theory just request my own data source that I created a limitless amount of time while only requesting the YouTube API a couple times a day. Let's say just every hour, so 24 times. The best way to do this for me was just creating a database in AWS. And for this use case, I chose MySQL. That's something I've had experience in the past with and there's enough variables already that I didn't want to have any extra confusion. This setup wasn't all that hard, and I've attached some good articles on how to do this in the description. Next, I needed to write a script to call the API and then load the database whenever I wanted to. This was slightly more challenging. In order to do this relatively quickly, I wrote the script on my local computer, but it definitely didn't make sense for me to always run it there. Instead, I should put it on a virtual computer, hopefully one of the EC2 instances from Amazon, so it would cooperate with the Amazon database that I built. And it was time for me to confront a new foe. This is Docker. I used to hate this stupid blue guy, but whale, if he isn't useful. Since I made this script on my local computer, it would be a lot easier to get it to run on another virtual machine if I used Docker. The idea of Docker is simple. If something works on a Docker environment on one computer, it'll also work on a Docker environment on another computer. That makes it so I can develop on Windows, Mac, Linux, doesn't matter. And as long as I have Docker on one of these machines and I make the image properly, my program will run on any of these computers.
Okay, so I did that and I got the database and the script to start running. I thought I was finally done until I gave my good friend Richmond a call. He said that I'd want to make an API around the database so that people couldn't just randomly fill it with stuff, like, uh, you know, made up comments about how my videos aren't any fun. I agree with Richmond. This does seem to make sense. So it was time to go down just one last rabbit hole for old time's sake. In this case, an API was just a way to connect with my database and only have it do certain things. So I made it so the API could only get data from the database, not write to it at all. Honestly, this is the part that took me the longest. It's also probably the least exciting. I tried like three different API tools and I just couldn't figure out how to set up the permissions correctly with the database when I deployed it. Like a fool, I fell into Amazon's trap and did exactly what they wanted me to do, which was to use more of their services. I failed as a developer, but luckily I'm a data scientist. Since I was going to succumb to Amazon's will, I did this a bit fancier and I made it serverless. What this means is that through the Amazon API gateway, I made an endpoint for my dashboard to hit. When that endpoint was hit, it would trigger a script that would run in Lambda. This script just queries the database and returned the answer. So every time it would query something, it would spin up a new like VM, run the request and then shut it down. Then I just connected that API to my dashboard and we were good to go. Okay, so I had to switch to the big board whiteboard to explain this whole process here. Okay, so why don't I just briefly overview the whole project process. So we start with the leaderboard and when it needs data, we send a request to the API. The API then triggers this Lambda function, which pulls the data from the MySQL database and sends it back to the API endpoint, which is forwarded on to our leaderboard. In order to keep the MySQL database up to date, we have this EC2 server that is constantly running with our script inside of a Docker container going there. Every hour, we send a request to the YouTube API. It comes back with data and it uploads the MySQL database with that new data there. Honestly, what a pain in the ass. But we got it done so we can actually look at the leaderboard now. You can check out the leaderboard yourself by clicking the link pinned in the first comment or in the description of this video. Honestly, the part that I'm most proud of about this leaderboard is the scoring system. I created these engagement points and I really wanted to incentivize comments that were well liked, but also created value for the community. I award points for each comment, each reply to your comment and each like your comment gets. I hope that this prevents people from just spamming because you can instead make a helpful comment and rack up the likes. You can also very easily toggle between the annual and the monthly leaderboard, and you can toggle me on and off to see how much I dominate my own comment section. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section about the engagement points in general, if you think that that's a good system for evaluating community contribution. Funnily enough, if you do leave a comment like that, you're gonna be earning engagement points as well. I bet you're wondering, Ken, what can I win? And I've been fortunate enough to work with a couple companies that are willing to put up some incredible stuff for both the winners and some of the people who placed in the top three to five. For this year, ending December 31st, we'll be giving away an HP Omen bundle, which is like a keyboard, a mouse, I think a headset. Um, it's all their, their gaming gear, which I think is incredibly cool. Thank you to HP for putting that up. For the monthly winner, NVIDIA is willing to put up some of their Deep Learning Institute credits for their courses. They're willing to give away in total over the course of this year and next year, over 100 courses and credits, which is valued up to $9,000. I think that's crazy. Each month we'll be giving one credit to each of the people in the top five. So, you know, you're getting 30 to $90 of value, depending on which course you, you take from their institute. It's really incredible stuff, very cutting edge. Interview Query is also offered a free month for one of the winners of the annual challenge. And I'll be giving away some books, some of my, uh, some of my new merch, potentially some uh, free versions of my course as well. 
I thought that this was just a fun and again, wholesome way to thank you all for being part of this community and helping it to grow. I'm planning to keep this going all of next year and I'll be making improvements to the leaderboard and the scoring system over time. This is also just the beginning of working with the YouTube comment data as well. I have some other collaborations with Tina Huang doing some actual machine learning on this data. So stay tuned for that within the next month or so. Ooh. If you want to do something similar, I left all the links I used for the YouTube API, the database, the cron job, and the API in the description. You can also see the dashboard in the GitHub repo that I linked there as well. Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. And I'd love to hear your thoughts on this type of video, this type of project. Did you like it? Did you dislike it? Uh, how would you make it better in the future? Until next time, good luck on your data science journey. So that is how a very simple project turned into something far more complicated. And for the uninitiated, welcome to data science.